So, okay, you mentioned, Sandra, that uh, his character. So did you guys, one of you picked Corinne, one of you picked Tez, and you went back and forth? Or how did this collaboration back and forth go? Yeah, um, it was, you know, I would write a chapter or a thousand words, and then Josh would write a chapter or a thousand words, and we would just go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, you know, that pattern doesn't stay true simply because when you revise, you have to go back and sometimes it doesn't make sense to have something from somebody. Where were we, Josh? Give us a, give us a quick tour. You turned your camera around. Now, I, now he's silent. Okay. You know, right. silence is what really makes podcasts <laughs> exciting. I was having technical difficulties, and I was trying to fix it, and I hit the wrong button. <laughs> but, Sorry, you know, mind. we just went Sorry. back and forth in large part because we were like, hey, this book is only going to be 45,000 words because it's middle grade. And uh, if we, if, yeah, if you write a 1,000 and I write a 1,000, <laughs> we'll be done with this book in a month and a half. And three months later, um, yeah. we had a 60,000 word book. <laughs> and then after revisions with um, our agents, we had a 68,000 word book. And then after revisions with our editor, it's back down to about 64,000 words. But yeah, we we each took a character. And um, have, have you read it? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, who do you think wrote which character? I, having met you in person, felt <laughs> that there was, uh, I, I, I felt that the Corinne, some of the things Corinne said were very Sandra type things to have said. Um, I figured the uh, minor spoiler, but it's, it's one of my favorite introductions of Elliot, uh, who, who she recently kissed. Uh, that sounded like a Sandra Mitchell joke to me, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, Josh wrote Corinne. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. Dead wrong. This is why I don't summarize people's books. Or That's why. No, <laughs> no but we love, we love, we love, we love asking. That one. Because neither of our agents guessed which one of us wrote which part. None of my family figured out who wrote which part. Um, <laughs> now, I will say that, you know, when we revised, you know, we were both, and, and even when we were writing, like, you know, I would like be like typing in a new chapter because we were working in Google Docs. And so, because Alphabet needs more money, right? Um, I would be, you know, typing down here in generic docs. And Josh would be, like, in the chapter before or whatever, like, going through. And he, you know, would be, like, fine-tuning jokes or adding, you know, funny things or whatever. And, you know, I would go through and I would fine-tune the horror and stuff like that. So, ultimately, I feel like the book has, like, a overall pretty consistent voice and feel and that's because we both went over each other's work just over and over. there are jokes that we can't remember who wrote it there's a lot um, i will say though that that josh did write the um elliot's kiss that that is all josh um well that's my son's name so that's yeah. you know who wrote that. <laughs> so, so we thought that would be yeah so so yeah it was one of those things where and it's fun because um I have written a male POV character, but older. Um, I've never written one this age. And so, like, sometimes when Josh writes something, I'm like, no, I'm sorry. Like, 11-year-old girls would never do that like that. Then we'll, you know, he'll change it. And occasionally there's like, no, like, 11-year-old boys would never do that. Um, not to spoil like the some second really, part. like. Yeah, like really specific things like yeah, inside a boy's locker room. Or <laughs> yeah, but it's like, like for example, it's like, you know, I, I told Josh that like, you know, 11-year-old girls are not going to like, you know, snipe at each other the way they've been sniping each other and then just be okay. That's just not the way it works. And like Whereas there was... Like, boys would. Like boys do that. Yeah. 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 You forget about it the moment you're in through the bathroom door. And then... um <laughs> In the second book, there's this part where I was joking about one guy who couldn't decide whether or not it was okay to wear underpants under his swimsuit. And Josh was like, in my experience, boys don't wear them under there and they don't really care. 
And I'm like, well, will it make sense if this one weird guy is weird about it? Or do I just need to change the whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> we kept it in. I felt like there's always, I felt like one weird guy, as long as they acknowledge that it's weird. Like, I felt yes. like that was. So yes, weird. everybody yeah. just, it was because he is one weird guy. Um, and I also raised the possibility. It's like, you know, what if minnows swim up there? Um, <laughs> you know, our, our, our editor That's may take it right. out. That, yeah. that felt so. right. That felt right. <laughs> at the very, I will say, at the very, very beginning, I think we sort of, I don't know if we even named the characters yet, but I think we just, I just, I remember us texting or emailing, and I just said, so I guess I'll write the guy and you write the girl, unless, and I just put dot, 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 just kind of as a joke, you know? And Sandra was like, hey, I'm up for uh, taking the dude if you want to swap it up. And I said, you know, I've never, I'd never written as a, as a female character before. So, um, but everything about this was kind of new and, and challenging and different. And I was like, you know what? Why not do something different than what I've done thus far? Her and uh, you know, she's like, I didn't want to make her like a tomboy, really. Like, I didn't want to make her like too much, just like a too much of like a guy character, <laughs> just as a girl. So I tried to, and then of course I did have a co-author who was a woman, so I had a good insight there. But um, but Corinne is very much like a, she's very much like rough and tumble in her way and she's very, very much like, like she's very much like basically every 11 year old girl right before they discover being attracted to people once like puberty starts to hit it's like this heat-seeking missile that just leaves destruction in its wake no matter your jo- your gender <laughs> and like 11 year old girls are very corinne and until somebody gets a crush on somebody and then it's like now you're too much of a baby you you know i mean it's just you know <laughs> everybody's very worried about being grown up when you're 11 and now that we're in our 40s we would very much like to be 11 yeah and one of the things that i read really early on just doing a little bit of just real googling like basic searching about like what was popular in ohio in 1983 I was just looking at newspapers or magazines or something online. And I found this thing about BMX, about the BMX scene. And I was like, oh, and I have a lot of friends who grew up in the BMX scene. That was like huge here in Pennsylvania. Uh, uh, my friends were like X Games people and stuff. Uh, so <clears throat> we, uh, I felt like oh, I'm going to make her in like super into BMX. And that sort of influenced her character in a way, like uh, that she had this fearlessness and she had this, because you got to be tough, you got to be brave, you got to be physical and strong and, and fearless to be, you know, taking jumps on your bike. And uh, so that's that like one detail I felt like kind of shaped, helped shape her character. So, and then Tez, uh, like we said, he is just like, <laughs> he's just like an he encyclopedia. Yeah, he is. I love Tez. Like, and so the, the funny part that Sandra wrote, like, if people think I wrote them, I'm so like, I feel kind of guilty, but also I feel so pleased because <laughs> because the Tez parts that are, are so funny, they're so funny that like uh, it just cracks me up every time I read them, and uh, you know I'm proud to <laughs> I'm proud to trick people into thinking I wrote them. So, but yeah, we made a point of not saying to anybody who wrote what. We made a point of just like uh, secretly uh, writing across the uh, gender lines. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm I'm glad it's that way, and that and that it is so difficult for for people to tell. It's way more fun. So, how do you yeah. keep uh, characters consistent since you're you're working on a, a shared? Not, well, it's not a shared universe. It's a single universe that you're sharing. I think is how that works. I ah, whatever. Um, how do you keep your characters straight? And then also, did you sit down and and make out a plot? Or are you guys pantsing this just back and forth like a game of telephone? Um, first of all, we keep things. This is how we keep things in order. Josh writes something and I say, hey, that can't happen because remember on this page, this happened. Um, <laughs> yeah. We're a, mix. We're a mix of plotters and panthers. Yeah. Society never... kept the continuity. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, Josh also, I mean, there was, it was very collaborative in that sense. But a lot of times, like a lot of times I did feel like I was like, no, that can't happen because of this and this. Um, <laughs> I'm glad but, though. I'm glad because I just I, I just think something's funny and I just go with it. I forget yeah. that it makes no sense. <laughs> that's that's not good. It's good to have you uh, 
it's good to have someone double checking it. So, and then well, what, what we would typically would do is like once a week or every other week, a Sunday morning, not too early, we, we would just like get a cup of coffee and we'd chat. We would just use like the, you know, I'm not on the phone, but just in, in like um, the Google Messenger or whatever, which we like because it saves it, you know, and then you can go back and look. So we would sort of spend the week plotting out the next couple chapters. So we would have a sense of where we wanted the next three, four chapters to go. And then one of us would go write them. We'd go write them and back and forth. And then we'd get to a point where we're like, okay, what happens next? And then we'd meet again in real time and collaborate and, and try to sort of uh, brainstorm. Uh, and sometimes, you know, we would what about this? So like, wait, no, that won't work. So there was there was we would plan a few chapters at a time and then and then and then reconvene and plan the next section. So but when we say that like we were planning it, it's not like we were breaking it down in like any <laughs> big way. Yeah, it's not like, like we have a table of contents at the top, and before each chapter was written, there were no titles. So it would it would be like um, you know. Tez and Corinne have a fight or, you know, Corinne steals the bike or whatever. And so like, we just have like these one line, this is what happens in this chapter. It was like very bare bones. Like this is how you plot a novel. I mean, it's just, you know, it would follow it like, okay, so this is something that we have to plug in at this point. Um, and we have multiple documents like, because if we said stuff that was like really funny or we felt like it was really inspired in our chat, we would paste it in that document. Or sometimes we would paste it in the actual manuscript document just so it was sitting there when we started to write. Um, but, you know, there were times where either, um, you know, something had changed. And so then like the, the five one liners that we had written down no longer made sense um, or, you know, it was fun. There was one where we we had like just the one liners on there and it was toward the end of writing the second book. And Josh texts me um, because when we finish a chapter, we go like tag, you're it. And that's like the code to go read the, the chapter now and now write yours. Um, and Josh texted me one morning. I was like, great chapter. By the way, what does one liner about my chapter mean? I don't remember what happens. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not like like super detailed planning. It's more like this is the trajectory of this story and um, we'll see what happens. And I think that's part of what makes it a lot of fun because I don't know exactly what Josh is going to write. I just know that, you know, plot point has to happen. I have no idea how he's going to approach it. Um, I have no idea what jokes he's going to write or if he's going to throw in more. I have no idea. And he doesn't know what I'm going to do either. And so I think that really puts a lot of life into this, into these stories, because there is that um, really fun tension of we didn't know what was going to happen either until we got there. And sometimes you uh, save the of... original uh, Twitter thread and the messenger and, and everything so that when the special edition comes out, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 10 years from now, 10 year anniversary edition, put all that stuff in the back. That's gold. The problem is, is that <laughs> most of the jokes that are in the in the planning are completely inappropriate for middle grade. Oh, yeah, some, of those, <laughs> yeah, some of those can't go in. We call that the director's <laughs> cut of Camp Murder yeah, Fate. There's a lot of director's cut material. <laughs> and sometimes i'll say like sometimes we'll sometimes we'll, we'll kind of run each other into a corner uh just sort of to be mean or just to be funny or whatever <laughs> i'll end a chapter and i'll just and i'll just be like and then i had the greatest idea and then i just get to stop and then sandra yeah he did one chapter where like he was supposed to be writing a scary scene and apparently his characters and or he himself decided that it would be more fun for them to all just like goof on each other. So like the chapter is like all of them goofing on each other. Then they get to the scary thing and it's like, like and then there was time. a crack. So it's like, so now I have to write the chapter that he was going to write. <laughs> because he thought it was funnier to have his characters goof on each other. <laughs> So when you, uh, I mean, obviously everyone who is listening to this hears how well you collaborate and work together. Seamless. It's, it's like uh, two or one mind speaking through two mouths. It's incredible. But um, I assume somewhere along the line, um, 
there had to, you had to have butted heads at some point. Somebody wanted to zig instead of zag. Somebody wanted a character to do this, and somebody wanted this. That. How did you resolve that? How, how for all those authors who want to have a successful collaboration like yours, how did you make sure this never came, you know, obviously it wouldn't come to blows because you're not in the same state, <laughs> but make sure everything stays civil Otherwise. and nobody's just resentful. <laughs> you know, we never argued over anything. There was never a point where we argued over anything. And I think part of that is that we've both been um, just really conscious of, of each other as artists, which sounds kind of pretentious. But like, you know, there have been, I mean, there have been ideas that I've had that we had to throw away. There have been ideas that Josh has had that, you know, that we've either had to put aside or, or that we just, we couldn't use. I mean, it was like super hilarious or super amazing, but it just didn't fit to where the story ended up going. And like, we'll write stuff in and like, you know, we'll leave each other notes. It's like, does this work? I don't know. Are we cramming too much stuff in here? Um, and I think that we've been really honest with each other. It's like, if that doesn't work, then we go back and do it. Like there have been places where like, I was in a bad place. Um, my dad passed away while we were working on the first one. And I was determined that we were going to hit that deadline. And it's like, we are not going to miss a deadline. And Josh is like, who cares about a deadline? And I'm like, this is this is when we had revisions. This was after the book was sold. And it's like, I, I'm like, I don't miss deadlines. And he's like, who cares? It doesn't matter. And, you know, there were places where he could tell that I just was not, I was not in the best place to be writing um, horror and or comedy. And, um, you know, and he would just go back in and he would tweak it and, you know, bring it back in line with, with, what we had intended to do because we both plan. I mean, you know, we both know what we want the book to be ultimately. Um, and, you know, there've been times when Josh has been down and that, you know, and it, we just, you know, or, you know, a thing doesn't work. And it's just like, well, why don't, I feel like a lot of times I'm like mean mommy and I'm like, Josh is like, what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And I'm like, not right now. We have to eat our exposition vegetables. <laughs> um, but we save stuff for other books. Like Josh had a super great idea and I know he loved it and he really, really wanted it to be in book two. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's going to be very important book three and it was just that book two was already like so crammed full of stuff it's like I don't see how we can fit this in here and make it actually work um but I mean I we've had conversations like we've had check-in meetings where it was just like you know are you feeling okay you know how's your mental health um you know are you upset about this am I you know am I you know steamrolling over you am I not doing enough work we've just been really honest about um like where we are just as people and, you know, any of our fears or vulnerabilities about how the book is going or, you know, all of that stuff, because it's important. And um, so I don't think we've ever argued over anything. I think the only thing that we ever really even came close to being like super disagree about um, was which voice actor, <laughs> which voice actors <laughs> would, would be in the, would be doing Camp Murder Face because I really, 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 really wanted Tara Sands, um, uh, who is fantastic. And Josh was like, but I really kind of like this one. And I was like, but I really like Tara Sands. And he was like, but I really kind of like that one. And ultimately what we did was like, all right, look, we're just going to have to, we have to pick two that go together. Otherwise it doesn't make sense. So <laughs> if you win, great. If I win, great but we're we're going to agree on it it's just like with the covers it's like if somebody feels really strongly about something i think both of us have been very good about it. it's like dude if that matters to you then go for it i don't care so um i wouldn't say it's been egoless because it makes it sound like we're pretentious people to start with but um i think it's been genuinely empathetic um, I mean, we, we genuine, we really like each other, you know, as people, I mean, yes, you know, we call each other names and we goof off and, you know, we are all kinds of dumb together, but I think, you know, <laughs> the, the part that you don't, that other people don't see is that 
um, we genuinely respect each other as writers. We genuinely care about how the other one feels. And we both want both of us to walk away really happy um, having made something really amazing together. I could be wrong, though, Josh. How do you feel about that? No, that's... that's yeah, no exactly pressure. Right. Tell her you hate her. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably nice what she said. <laughs> that's, a, that's exactly right. And, and, and very beautifully said. And, um, you know, oh, to, to answer the original question, like, to other authors who want to work together, if you're thinking about, like, part of it, I could say a couple things that I think have, like, to the fact that it worked. But part of it, I, I'm honestly going to say, is like, like Sandra said, like, well, we both wanted the same thing for the book. But like, how did that happen? I don't know. This is magical. I think part of it is like a little bit of just good fortune. Like, it just really was fortunate because our, our writing is so, um, there was just some significant degree of good fortune or i honestly like to just call it the magic that happened in the very yeah. beginning that we both like saw this for what it could be and what it was going to be and we immediately with like a big 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 picture of it and like little things around the edges maybe needed to be started up but we both and how i don't know maybe just like the phrase camera race is just funny. <laughs> and it just paints a picture in your mind of what kind of book it's going to be or also yeah and our sensibilities overlap a lot but then also, I will say, I think it's really good that we're not exactly the same kind of writer because yes, I, I think, think that true. neither one of us is like in each other's house. We're both in a really unfamiliar house together. <laughs> yeah. And if you try to, if I tried to collaborate with someone who was too much like me, I'm not sure it would work. I think it would like fall apart. Uh, and and so we, you know, our collaborate, our, our complementary skills are, are really important uh, or just we're fortunate that they work together. And the other thing I'll say is that like, and it's not forced, but like we both constantly praise each other's work all the time. Like we're constantly just reading each other's chapters and just texting each other LOLs all the time. Like we're just constantly cracking up and like loving it. So then when Sandra tells me, she's like, when she's like the end of that chapter didn't work, I'm not like, oh, she's being mean. I'm like, cause she's, she backed it up with 25 things that she liked earlier. So I'm not feeling, so I'm feeling comfortable and I'm feeling, I'm not feeling defensive and I'm not feeling, you know, uh, raw about it. I'm just like, oh, she must, like, it probably doesn't work because <laughs> she's not for, for the sake of it. Like, because, yeah, because we're always giving as much positive feedback or, you know, as, uh, I don't know, that, it's not like we, we're intense. It helps. Like, we, we constantly are, like, cheering each other on, like, all the time. Yeah. Like, uh, sometimes literally, like, in the, in the document, Sandra will be typing and I'll just be in the chat window, like, just like clapping, <laughs> just like typing go, <laughs> and just like, <laughs> and like, and uh, just like, I don't know, I just am constantly amused by the stuff she comes up with. And so I'm just constantly cheering her on. So, yeah, if at a point I'm just like, oh, that maybe we could make that a little tighter or something, whatever, a little note, like, it doesn't feel hurtful because there's, there's so much love preceding it. But, um, but yeah, also, I will say that there is something really important to, and um, it's a little, I mean, I don't know if it's surprising or not, but it's like, you would be shocked. I mean, one might be shocked to know, like, how much Sandra knows about my life. Like, at this point, <laughs> like, writing this book together. <laughs> I mean, I've, like, we've had, like, it's become a really, like, you know, close working relationship that, like, friend, that goes way beyond the margin of the pages. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, it has to be someone you can get along with and talk to as a person, uh, in addition to the, uh, the writing and the art and yeah and sandra is a very empathetic person i'll say and also like she'll go out of her way to check in and like you and you i feel like i feel like you can always tell like even if i don't say anything you're just like hey you doing all right <laughs> like, <laughs> like you can just tell by the quality of my i don't mean quality like good or bad but just the quality of my prose that day you're like josh might have had a bad day at work <laughs> like and then you'll check in and you'll be like tell me like are you all right like and that's that's really that's really meaningful to me like it really makes me feel like supported you know because when you're working with somebody yeah it can get and i've been in like i said i've been in bands for years and like it can get competitive you know uh, with the other guitarist or it can be like no i want my lyric here or you know egos can be in the in the room and uh yeah i think also like at the point in our careers 
I don't know that I would have been a good collaborator when I was in my like early twenties because no, I, no, I would not. Have been. Uh, yeah, I was like very sensitive and I'm not not, not ego driven, but like too insecure to take mm -hmm. a note, you know. And like now I'm just like, well, yeah, it's not personal. Just like either that part works or it doesn't. Like yeah, and like either, either way, we just want the same thing, which is to make it better. Even early on, like you know. Like I said, like we will go through like the chapter that the person wrote before and we'll like we'll just change things. And it's not like we're sending each other notes all the time saying, I changed this, I changed this, I changed this, I changed this. Um, we find out that it got changed when we read back over it. You know, we're not asking each other's permission to change every little thing. Um, we're far enough along in our careers that that we can trust each other, that you know, he's not gonna throw something in there that I would find, you know offensive or upsetting or it's like what are you even doing and you know and I feel like I don't do that to his characters either um I do think that you know a lot like sometimes it will be like or you know Josh will say something like you know says something really tezzy here or I'll say something can you like you know can you edit for Corinne's voice here um but a lot of times we're not even like giving each other critique we're just like yay 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 and like we're changing the things that need to be changed to make it work and we don't find that out until like you know we have to read it for revisions or whatever no i'm kidding we find out before then but um <laughs> you know <laughs> but I, sometimes we, like I, I know i could not have worked with another person like that early on in my career i was a screenwriter before this so like most of my career had been collaborative but it had been collaborative in the sense of I wrote a screenplay and then everybody down the line screwed it up for me. Um, <laughs> and so I had a, a lot of bitterness and very like, you know, I was very Gollum like with like my early manuscripts. Um, and and I, I would not have been able to do Can't Murder Face that early on. But I think we were both right at the exact same place, the right place where we can be like, you know, it's not a personal reflection if I wrote too stiff a chapter, you know. <laughs> and there it's it's were... good that you guys get along because this is like about as close to being book married uh, as you can, especially when book two comes out. It's a huge success and you've got to write five more. It, it's good that this is. Yeah. Rich. 